And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanafel, and I am now joined by former NFL safety, Tony Parrish. Tony, how's it going, man? I'm doing all right, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for joining me. Uh, well, let's get right to it, Tony. I see you attended University of Washington. Can you tell us why you decided to go there? Uh, well, when I graduated high school, it was 1993. University of Washington uh, had been the three straight Rose Bowls, uh, won a national championship in 1991, and had one of the baddest defenses in the country. So uh, being a West Coast guy, that was the one place for me. And can you tell us how your entire experience, both like education and sports-wise, was like at the University of Washington? Um, well, I tell you this: we had a very, uh, we had a very tough, uh, hard-nosed team, uh, and the culture was very, uh, uh, what was it? A very physical culture. I remember the Miles Corgan, um, who showed up and sat in my living room. I um, mean, coached tight ends at the time. Um, was speaking to myself and my mother and said, look, when he comes up here, we're not going to baby him. It's going to be tough, but we'll turn him into a man. And, uh, and they did exactly that. Um, whether it was on or off the field, um, the University of Washington definitely pushed me. With the 35th overall pick in the 1998 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Tony Parrish out of the University of Washington. Tony, how was it? How was it like to hear your name get called to the uh, in the NFL draft? You know, it's, it's uh, for lack of a better word, it's just one of those surreal moments where you hear your name, you know it's for real, and um, it's you know it's a dream. Uh, playing in the NFL was what I wanted to do for as long as I can remember. Uh, every yearbook from when I was growing up, every year in school yearbook, I always said I would be a professional football player. Even when I didn't even play football. I picked up football uh, in the eighth grade when I was my first year playing football. So I had many years of yearbooks telling people I would play professional football. And they would laugh because my parents wouldn't let me play yet. Well, as we know, so many people say that when they grow up, they're going to be a professional football player. How did you make that come true? You know what, I just, I never doubted that I could do it, and whenever I stepped on the field, I just gave it my all. Tony, what was it like when you were uh, in the Bears locker room for the first time, and you seen the number 37 jersey with your last name on it for the first time? You know, I, you just, you just have to suck it all in, <laughs> you know, you just, you just really suck it in and kind of go, alright, now it's time to go to work. And it looks like that, man. It looks like you did that because according to NFL.com, you started all 16 games your rookie year. As a matter of fact, you started every game uh, during your time with the Bears and did not miss one. Does that sound right? That is true, man. I think I ended up going a streak of about 100 and uh, I want to say 26 games, 24 games, something like that. Uh, and then I, I broke my leg actually against the Bears while I was with the 49ers. And that ended my uh, consecutive star streak. Dang. Uh, can you tell us what it was like when you got your first interception, which was uh, in your rookie season with the Bears? Uh, you know what? When you catch the ball and you're, you're intercepting the ball on defense, it, all that training, all that conditioning you have, all of a sudden goes out the window. As soon as you touch the ball, your adrenaline shoots up, you start running a little bit, and you immediately become exhausted. <laughs> it's amazing how tired you get once you finally catch the ball and you get the ball in your hands and you try to get it for yards as a defender. It's just pure excitement. <laughs> Tony, I see you also had a sack your rookie year. What is better for a defensive back, uh, uh, getting a sack or an interception? Definitely an interception. No doubt. No doubt about it. But I'm going to tell you this, something you don't know. Um, in the preseason of my rookie season, in 1998, the Chicago Bears played against um, the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore when they opened their new stadium. Do you know who the quarterback was who I actually got a sack on that day? Uh, who? No, I'm sure you don't, man. No, I don't. Jim who, who Harbaugh. Is it? Jim Harbaugh. Oh. Super Bowl this weekend. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh. Wow, man. Man, you're yeah. showing your age, Tony. You're showing your age. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, actually, that probably just shows how long he played. Yeah. The Hallmark brothers played for a long time. Yeah, they did, man. They did. And uh, what kind of player was Jim Harbaugh? Do you know at all? 
You know what? That was uh, towards the end of his career. So I didn't get a chance to square up against him much. I just remember that uh, my first, I guess we'll call it, it's an unofficial sack since it's in the preseason. But uh, that was against Jim Harwell. <laughs> Tony, you spent four NFL seasons with the Chicago Bears. Although I don't believe not one of those seasons were a winning season, what was your time like in Chicago? Uh, actually, uh, we were 4-12, 6-10, 5-11 when I was with the Bears. Times were definitely fading rough and we're battling it out. But my, uh, the last year we went 13-3. We won the NFC North, it was called at the time. And that was the, uh, we ended up losing in the second round of the playoffs to, to Philadelphia. So I did uh, get some success to Chicago and picked up a divisional championship. And uh, I loved playing Chicago every minute of it. Even when we weren't winning and I had a little chip on my shoulders, just being in the city and feeling the, uh, feeling the love coming from the fans and the atmosphere, I enjoyed it every minute of it. I believe that 13-3 and three season, now that I think about it, uh, I had a former Bear, and I believe he was your former teammate, uh, Joe Tafoya. I believe that was his rookie season. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right. Well, what can you tell us about Joe, man? He's, he's a really good friend of the show. Yeah, man. Next time we talk to him, so I hello. All right, will do. I haven't, spoke, I, haven't spoke, I haven't spoken to Joe in a while. Hey, man, on Twitter, <laughs> at Joe Tafoya. You guys are listening to yeah, Sportsman. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. That's one thing that I uh, that I miss the most about the NFL, man. Uh, uh, one of the things I miss most is the locker room. A lot of good guys, a lot of fun times. Just uh, you know, playing hard and, uh, and cracking jokes with one another. Yeah, I have a question about the locker rooms in just a minute. You guys are listening to Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanafel, talking with former NFL safety Tony Parrish. After four seasons with the Bears, Tony, you signed with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I'm sure they're not the only team that wanted you, so why did you choose to sign with the 49ers? Well, you know, I I chose with the Niners because, uh, honestly, they had the, uh, the free agent safety job that all the other safeties wanted. Uh, you know, the chance to, uh, to, to go out to California, um, play in, 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 in another storied organization. And, um, you know, the, I like the personnel that was over there, and the deep to the corner coordinator was actually a University of Washington alumni, uh, Jim Moore Jr. Jim Moore Jr. played safety at University of Washington. And you said the 49ers had the safety spot that everybody wanted. Why was that, Tony? It was just the system. The system that they ran and what they were going to do with, um, you know, with their safety. You know, and it showed. You know, my first season with the Niners, I, I believe I had, like, um, I think it was around 17 pass breakups. I uh, led the league in interceptions and, you know, showed up a lot, of, a lot of good stuff in the stat column. Yeah, you know, you said it your first year with San Francisco, you intercepted the quarterback seven times. Your second year in San Fran, you uh, led the yeah. league. You, the, and then your second year, you led the league with nine interceptions. Uh, Tony, how did that happen? Was it just that uh, different system of San Francisco that made you have a lot of success? Yeah, you know, I believe, I believe it was my first year at nine, and the next year I came back with seven. It was just a system. You know, uh, Jim Moore Jr. looked at me and said, look, Tony, uh, there's more that you can do, and if you come here, we're going to use you. And it was true. Uh, you know, Jim moved me around quite a bit. I played some strong free safety uh, also, even uh, even a little bit of corner and an outside linebacker, if you will, in some of our different uh, packages. So he just moves me around, and he let me uh, be pretty active. Tony, I talked to some players, and they say, you know, I get both answers that, you know, the Pro Bowl, it's not that big of a deal. And then the other side, they say that it's a really big deal. It shows that uh, a lot of people respect you. Were you at all surprised that you weren't selected to the Pro Bowl in any of those two seasons? Uh, i tell you this, I had a, had a few seasons where I was surprised that I wasn't selected. You know, I uh, was selected as an all-pro. Um, but the Pro Bowl was something I was just elusive for my career. For whatever reason, I just didn't get the uh, didn't get the publicity, which um, which allowed me to go. I was uh, on that list of guys who, uh, who were snubbed. But uh, that being said, man, um, I, I definitely feel as if I was able to... Uh, Garner some of that respect, but it was a goal that I wasn't able to achieve. Tony, you spent four seasons with the Bears, five with the 49ers. Can you tell us your favorite football moment? Or, or if you don't just have one, can you tell us your favorite, uh, a few of your favorite football moments in your NFL career? Um, no, 
no doubt, uh, one of my favorite moments um, would have to be kickoff, opening day, my rookie season. Um, as Chicago Bear playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars, it was probably a 110 degrees on the field. Uh, I remember being so excited um, at kickoff and just emotional that I was running down the field uh, looking for, uh, you know, for uh, for someone on the kick return team who was trying to, he was trying to come, you know, pick me off and give me a concussion. At the same time, I was wiping the tears out of my eyes. I was so excited to actually, you know, officially be playing in the NFL. Um, so that was one of them. Uh, the other one would be the, um, when we won the NFC North uh, in Chicago, in, in Soldier Field. You know, being able to go ahead and put that championship uh, hat on, a uh, division championship hat, and uh, pretty much party with the fans in the stadium. Those were a couple of uh, great moments right there. I'm a Bears fan, Tony, as you know, and can you tell us about uh, that, that Bears and Packers rivalry, how real it is as a player? You know what? Uh, I, I, people ask me all the time, I tell you this, it's like, not only is it, it's a strange combination, you know, it's a very intense rivalry, but at the same time, um, it's like playing against your next door neighbor. Because after the game, you, uh, you get on the bus, or you start walking towards the bus, and there are Packer fans who are, who are feeding um, the opposing team. They're giving us food <laughs> as, we're, as we're going on the bus. So as you go to the stadium, it's, you know, you're going to lose. You suck. This is, Pack, this is Packer country. And on the way home, win or lose, they're trying to feed you. I think what people uh, in, in Green Bay realize, and some people around the country did not realize, that there was a time when, um, when uh, George Hallis, actually uh, helped save the Green Bay Packers because uh, they're about to lose their franchise. They have some financial issues. George Howe's going to help them through. So there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little respect there that's kind of underlined in their that rivalry. Yeah, I did not know that. Uh, Tony, like I said, four seasons with the Bears, five with the 49ers. Uh, can, can you tell us the differences between the two locker rooms? Uh, you know what, locker rooms tend to change uh, in complexity um, every year. Uh, unfortunately, it's because of turnovers. There's, there's so much turnover that it's just, uh, you know, that, that mood is sort of always changing, you know, depending on who comes and goes. Some guys have a really loud, boisterous personality. Some guys are quiet. Um, but the locker rooms in general are just, they're fun places to be, man. Sometimes guys just sit back in their lockers and just just crack jokes, just talk about each other constantly. And uh, one thing you can't have, though, you cannot have a have thin skin. Because if you have thin skin, someone's going to find out that soft spot and they're going to poke at it constantly. <laughs> and no one really cares if you get mad. Oh, uh, man, can you imagine what Manti Teo's going to be going uh, uh, gonna be going through when he gets to the NFL? Oh, Oh, yeah, I wish I could be in a locker room so I could laugh at some of the stuff that's going to happen to that time, too. Do you know how many ghost girlfriends are going to be thrown through the locker room? Oh, man, I, I can't. <laughs> Uh, that is funny. Tony, I, I really appreciate your time, man. Uh, I just have a few uh, fun, quick questions for you, and then I'll let you go. Does that sound all right? No problem. All right, I'm going to start off with, what is your favorite TV show and movie? Favorite TV show and favorite movie? Yeah. Uh, favorite TV show? I guess i got to go back to the old school Cosby show, man. <laughs> yeah, I love the Cosby show, and my, my favorite movie is actually one that's... Um, uh, most people don't think of it actually in, on television. Sometimes they would play it as a mini series because it's so long. It's called Shock of Zulu. I mean, if you were going to watch the movie all the way through, it might take five hours. Wow. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not too much of a fan of long movies, man. I'll I'll always be the one knocked yeah. out in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know if I was in the movie theater, man. I know when it came out, I think they pretty much played it as a played it as a as a mini series. I know in California, growing up, um, they would play it over the week. Yeah. And they put on television, played over the week, and as soon as it came out on DVD, I bought it. All right, Tony. Except for football, what is your favorite sport? Soccer. If you could meet any famous person, any famous person, who would it be? 
Wow. Uh, Barack Obama. All right. You're, you're on Twitter, at the Tony Parish. Why do you make it important to connect with your fans, man? Because as we know, if it wasn't for you connecting with your fans, I mean, I, I wouldn't even have you on the show right now. You know what? That's it. You know, just let people know that, hey, now that I appreciate the support, uh, I'm here. You know, you want to chop it up, ask me a question, we can, uh, we can keep it going. All right, sounds good. Tony, I, I think I know the answer to this one, but who do you have uh, in the Super Bowl? Who do you think will win, Ravens or 49ers? You definitely know I'm picking the 49ers, and that is going to be one of the most physical um, Super Bowls that, uh, that we've seen in a while. That's not predict. There's definitely a lot of guys on both teams that like to, uh, to, like to mix it up. And last but not least, what is something about Tony Parrish that many people do not know? Something about me that many people do not know. Oh, wow. I guess I should have given you a heads up on that on Twitter, shouldn't I? No, no, that's all right, man. No, that makes me even better. That makes me even better. I have to come off the top of it. I'm a classical music fan. How about that? All right. All right. Uh, favorite favorite classical uh, music song? <laughs> favorite song? Uh, you know what? I don't have a name that I can give you as my favorite one. Um, but I do like classical. I've been known to go check out a symphony and just, uh, and just relax. All right, Tony, I, once again, I really appreciate your time, man. It was great to have you on. Hopefully we can do it again later on in the future. Before I let you go, is there anything that you would like to uh, plug on there for our listeners? No, I don't have anything to plug, man. All I'm going to say is uh, good luck, Chris. Keep it going, and I'll, I'll come back on whatever you like. Thanks, man. Sounds good. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care, man.